it has been a little bit of a crazy few weeks for us, but we are back regularly scheduled Gladiator Diaries episode 16. Uh, plenty to talk about because we skipped out on last week in the end. Um, but yeah, everything everything back to normal. Um, how was the last week been for you before we get into the, uh, the Lithuania trip? Well, actually, it was quite atrocious, to be honest with you. I think I already started getting ill when I was going to Lithuania. Uh, and then, like, the next morning, I was like, oh, I feel a bit weird. I'm, but, like, you know, but I'm okay. You know what I mean? And then um, next thing you know, uh, I, I didn't feel good on the Monday. Felt a bit better on Tuesday. Felt worse on the Wednesday. And then when I came home on the Thursday, uh, I ended up getting the most horrendous flu ever uh, known to man. Um, literally I was, I was bed bound pretty bad for that evening. And then it slowly started getting better towards the end of the week. And then this start of this week started fresh back in there, back into training. But yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't good. Um, this, 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 this last week is just very, uh, very annoying, but main thing is got healed up. We're all good. I know you got ill as well. It seems like it just seems to be the, the, the whole running theme uh, around this end of the year, everyone's getting sick. So, uh, yeah, and obviously being in another country, other germs and stuff like that, you know. But uh, again, I'm pretty sure I caught something from the UK or maybe on the plane or something. No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been a strange old time. I've literally never had uh, tonsillitis in my life, and then get it during the fight week for UFC 296. So yeah. I'm like, I, this is like one of the biggest cards of the year and I can't even talk. So I can't say anything about it. So uh, yeah, yeah it, it was it was horrendous timing. Did the um, did the flu impact you too much on the trip itself or, or was it mostly? Um, I mean, my cardio wasn't amazing and, I, and it, was, it was a bit worrying for me because I'm like, my cardio is usually pretty good. And obviously it was different type of training. So obviously... Um, I, I've got to just, you know, uh, put it down to as well, just doing different types of kickboxing training and stuff like this, along with the MMA, like, you know, my energy systems probably were out of whack, but also I think the flu definitely didn't help. So, um, yeah, I think it definitely affected my training, um, whilst I was out there, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, I did what I could. I still managed to train. That's the main thing. And, uh, yeah, like I say, we just move onwards. How, um, how was it doing the, the kickboxing training? I remember obviously when, when you got back from the wrestling camp, we were talking about how um, you were seeing these guys who, you know, that's their whole thing is training wrestling. And you were like, oh, they're not really doing anything that dissimilar to me. So how was yeah. it going out there and, and training with a glory kickboxer? Well, you know, and a kickboxing world champion as well. Uh, a man who's also beaten Alex Pereira. He is very good. Um, like I say, I got very tired, so I don't think I was able to show my skill set uh, fully the way I'd like to. But um, he's a really nice guy, really warm, really welcoming, really took care of me. Um, and yeah, the training was really good. It just, it, it, again, added another layer, added another. I did some MMA training as well whilst I was out there. He made sure to organize that. Another great guy in uh, uh, Urban Avicius, another really good fighter. Um, I think he's fighting Bellator. Um, so, you know, I, I got some really good training, but yeah, the kickboxing training, just the exchange of weight and putting your, putting the power into the shots and putting the correct weight distribution from, from, uh, from your feet, uh, was definitely something that I've taken, uh, for sure from that trip. And I'll, I'll be working on it more closely as we're getting, um, you know, further into, you know, getting closer towards a fight and stuff like this. So it definitely opened my eyes to better weight distribution and adding more power to my punches. So, uh, and just being more fluid and loose. And uh, yeah, I could definitely feel like I can uh, add that to my game moving forward. How was, uh, how was the rest of the trip? Like, I mean, I, from, from seeing the, the stuff that you posted on social media and stuff, it seemed like it was a, it was a really good trip. I'm sure like it was a, it was a good thing for, for the soul to get it in before the end of the year to, to kind of yeah, fuel you. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know, going to the grave was, uh, was quite, uh, to my grandparents' grave was quite, quite a good, you know, it was a sad moment, but at the end of the day, uh, it was still like quite a, like I say, like a spiritually rewarding moment where it feels like, you know, I've, 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 I've given my respects, you know, I've, I've almost, you know, you know, shook the hand of, 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 of my ancestors, essentially, uh, my grandparents who always give me strength, who, as I mentioned, gave me the strength leading into my, uh, 
fight in Australia. So um, it, it was good and I feel like it was much needed. It was something that was definitely needed. And I think it gave me good spiritual energy. Um, although training and everything has been quite difficult lately and, and stuff like that, and obviously being ill, I think like it, it's definitely leading into the new year going to give me a very good spiritual energy. Um, and yeah, I got to see some other friends and stuff like that of my dad's got to uh, tighten up my Lithuanian a little bit. Um, so yeah, it was just a, a very good trip overall. We were main there mainly for training, but we, we, we got to do a, a bit of everything. So it was good. Yeah. Um, so I, I assume because of the, so you said that this week, the illness has pretty much gone away, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of getting back into the the standard kind of routine because you've had a busy month with these these two trips and stuff like that uh how much how much are we back into regular routine for you well yeah like monday normal training tuesday normal training wednesday pretty much normal training um so today i'll i'll, I'll train once um tomorrow I'll, I'll do my normal regular schedule program and then on saturday i'm driving to newcastle uh, to go and see my step um stepmom's parents so um you know that's always a kind of a tradition that we have um you know for for christmas so it'd be nice to you know i'm still going to train on the beach i'm just going to do some different type of training but to chill out you know let, let let the mind relax a little bit uh be in a different setting um and yeah just uh probably just have a little bit of a reset i guess and then yeah when i come back it's pretty much all guns blazing again yeah um whilst you got back from from lithuania were you able to get into too much of the the ufc 296 fight week of course it's, it's weird that we don't have any ufc for the next few weeks so it really did feel like a i i always loved when they used to do a show right at the end of the year because it felt like kind of you know yeah time to celebrate everything that had happened in yeah. the year and then you get excited looking ahead to the new year and they kind of managed to do that earlier um this yeah. time around but it, it really did feel like the kind of like big end of year um the big end of year show mm, yeah no it, it was a very it was an amazing show um you know obviously you had a bit bit of dramas uh going into it i felt like that comment by colby covington was absolutely horrendous uh you know i definitely feel like there's there's a line that you shouldn't cross uh no matter what kind of trash talking you're doing I don't think you should definitely, I don't think you should go into family at all, especially, you know, um, with, with the story of Leon Edwards and, 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 and his family and stuff like that. I think that was a very low blow, you know, and uh, credit to Leon Edwards for, for pulling off an emphatic victory and absolutely dominating and having all that, you know, in, in the back burner, knowing that, you know, that they was trying to get inside his head and he didn't let it affect him and he got the job done. So, um, yeah, I thought that was a, the, the, the press conference in general, like even, even Tony Ferguson was going quite crazy, um, and, and stuff like that. Uh, then we had Ian Gary pulling out, uh, due to pneumonia. So, you know, we've had a, a whole host of different crazy things, uh, going on, but, but the show itself was, uh, was, was really good. You had Rachmanov pick up an amazing win, um, you know, completely shut down Stephen Wonderboy's game, which is what you should do against a really good striker. Um, and yeah, Leon put on an amazing performance. Um, who else was it that was fight? Oh yeah, and we had um, Pantoja and uh, Brandon Royval. And yeah, like Pantoja just looks amazing with his setup for his takedowns. Just literally just got the takedown whenever he liked and, you know, controlled the game that way. So yeah, a load of really big fights, really big names. And yeah, what a way to end the, uh, end the year. Considering that you had spent like that week, um, like you said, doing a bit of MMA training, but obviously uh, a big reason to go out there was to to train with a super high level kickboxer. When you've when you've spent your time doing that and kind of adjusting to the things that he might do differently and stuff like that, how impressed are you watching Leon Edwards, who isn't you know he didn't come into MMA with a kickboxing background, and yet you would think that he is one of these guys that transitioned from being an elite level kickboxer when you see the way that he just like effortlessly keeps uh, Colby at range for the whole fight. Like I I'm watching him going, you wouldn't be able to tell that this guy came into MMA training MMA. Like he looks like a professional kickboxer with years yeah. of experience. I, I, I was more impressed with his uh, distance management. Um, yeah. So I guess that's probably the, the, the part of the kickboxing that I thought was really, what he did well um 
you know, he he managed to stop Colby's shots. He, he managed to put him on the end of his range and not let him come in to any distance to even get a decent shot off. And even when he did take him down, got straight back up and, you know, he even took him down himself. You know, so the, the distance management and the pressure was amazing from Leon and the composure as well was really good. So, you know, all, all bases covered. And, um, yeah, he looked, he looked really high level. He set everything up, faked well. Um, kicks really well, switching stances. I mean, you know, this is everything a high-level uh, mixed martial artist, what you'd expect from a high-level mixed martial artist at the top of the game. So, um, yeah, it was an amazing performance. Yeah, I, um, I, I was trying hard not to wake up the neighbors uh and usually that would be because of some crazy knockout or something like that but but when leon got taken down and got back up to his feet and then shot a takedown immediately on colby and got it like that is crazy right like yeah. uh, to watch to watch a guy that uh, i've seen so many memes posted about this in, in the last few weeks of uh you know leon learned how to wrestle in birmingham and colby covington is you know as high accolades as you can get in the American wrestling system. Um, and so to see to see a guy from the UK go out there and, and not only defend takedowns, but land some of his own. And then, you know, I know that some people were kind of like, is he is he playing with fire a little bit in engaging in the grappling? But like, you know, he just again, you talk about the composure to be that confident in yourself to be like, yeah, I'm just gonna grapple with you for the last round and we'll see what happens. Like Crazy. Well, yeah, exactly. He's, he's built up that confidence in his training, uh, in obviously the high profile fights. He's, he's, you know, he's gone in and, 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 uh, stopped the wrestling of like Kamaru, the likes of Kamaru Usman. Um, and he's just developed those skill sets over the years, over the course of his career. And obviously now he's at the pinnacle. He's at the peak. He's at the peak of, but he's not even at, probably at the peak of his skills, skill development. You know what I mean? He's probably got more things to improve on, but he's already uh, at such a level to be high caliber guys such as Covington but Covington looked very stuck in the mud and obviously when when the discrepancy in striking is that big I mean you know it, it really did show how good Leon's striking is in, in comparison and even his resting in comparison to Covington fair moment, you know yeah uh, it's something that we've spoken about a lot uh in the last few weeks um with, with you doing the grappling tournaments and kind of you know you know you've got that but having the confidence to use it in a fight and stuff like that right because leon his grappling is is really improved i think that that's clear to see throughout his ufc run but yeah. also his confidence seems to grow massively from fight to fight like he, he wasn't doing this when he was fighting like the cowboys and rafael dos anjos is of the world and yet it feels like after the the wins over Kamaru Usman, that confidence just went another level to where he's yeah. like, no, nah, like you know, he it was a big thing for him to be like, I'm gonna be the first guy to take Kamaru Usman down, but then to be like, I'm gonna wrestle with Colby Covington just because everyone says he's gonna out wrestle me. That confidence to use it, even though you're miles ahead on the scorecards, is incredible. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is something that I can definitely take a page out of his book is just to be confident in your own skill set. And, you know, obviously he's been doing it so much. He's been drilling it so much, um, doing all the all, all the things needed within his training, within his camp, uh, going over the movements over and over and over again. And, you know, he's just gotten so sharp at it that, um, you know, it's only going to show in a fight. And, you know, he's, he's one of the best at putting it, putting it, you know, on the performance on the night, which is when it's important, you know, and uh, he's done an amazing job. So, uh, you know, credit to him for being the most well-rounded mixed martial artist, probably well, one of the most well-rounded mixed martial artists in the game today. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how this keeps happening, right? But when we first uh, started this podcast, it was talking about how crazy it is that you haven't been able to have a fight in London yet, right? That is <laughs> That is one of the things we need to tick off. And incredibly, we spent a lot of a lot of episodes talking about 2024, that London dream is finally going to happen. And now it seems like we're not getting a London card. They've kind of announced the schedule. And usually it would be around that March date. And uh, and now it's being talk like spoken about as uh, a Manchester show potentially in the summer or a big card with with maybe Leon and Tom, maybe just one of them, something like that. Like. I don't know how this keeps happening, man. I don't know how you haven't been able to fight in London yet. It always seems like the time doesn't work out somehow. 
I've got to earn my spot, man. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm so focused on improving, so so focused on getting better. I don't really care where I fight. Um, as of right now, I mean, hell yeah, it would be absolutely amazing. But I want to fight in a stadium, you know, wherever it is in the world. You know, I think that Saudi Arabia card seems like a uh, a pretty viable option uh, for me for, for for my next fight. That will give me, you know, from the beginning of the year. Uh, it would give me eight, nine weeks. So, like, pretty much you're straight into camp, uh, which would be nice. So, you know, it's just, uh, like I say, we've been building on all, all the other skill sets that I needed uh, to progress me. And Oh, I've just lost. I can't hear you. I don't know why. Um, why can't I hear you? Yeah, and uh, and we could just carry on like like nothing happened. Um, yeah, there we uh, go. Where were just we? Smooth transition. <laughs> I can't remember where we were. Um, it was it was talking about my next fight, saying how I haven't got a London fight. Yeah, the because I I wonder if there'll be a few UK guys on the Saudi Arabia card in place of you know we usually get a London date for March, so a lot of guys will have been targeting that date, I imagine, and also the time zone works very well for a UK audience yeah. as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a few UK guys on there. And, and like you said, it, it felt like, you know, that date made sense it's, for you yeah. anyway. So Especially since, you know, I don't want to be waiting around. And obviously if I fight in March and, you know, everything goes my way, that was set up for me to be able to fight still in London in summer. So there's, uh, you know, just got, got to wait and see what happens, I guess. You know what I mean? Like stay ready, stay sharp, keep improving. And then, you know, uh, let the opportunity come when it does. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll be matching those fights sort of around now anyways, uh, leading into the new year. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what opportunities come. But, uh, yeah, um, the London card will happen. It's just a matter of time. It's just, you know, okay, just keep <laughs> chipping away, keep getting these wins, and then, you know, it will all happen. Tell you what, I had uh, I had an absolute nightmare. I I'd booked something um, specifically as a as a Christmas present um, for April, and I was like, "There's not going to be a London card, I don't think, around then." So I should uh -huh. be fine to book whatever weekend I want in April. I got got a few things on in March, so I'll play it safe and I'll go for April. And then literally, like the next day, they announced that on that day is UFC 300. And I was like, "Well, I have to move the date." Because <laughs> that's going to be a crazy show by all accounts. So yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, yeah, they they always like to go big on these on these hundredth, you know, and now it's the three hundredth card. That's absolutely mad to think that you know since what nineteen ninety three, I think it was, uh, was when their first event happened, and you know they they've had three hundred events now. That's 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 crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you reckon? Uh... I, this has been like such a huge talking point for months at this point. I don't know if we've we've really touched on it, but uh, do you think McGregor will be back for that one? It, it would feel strange to me if throughout Connor's years competing in the UFC, if he never competes at one of those like huge. I mean, his fights are so big that it almost doesn't matter what number it is, right? But to have you know, in, in the past you've had GSP on UFC 100 with Brock Lesnar, and then 200 to have. To have Brock on there and Amanda Nunes and Daniel Cormier, right? It feels like you have these you have these people that really define the era. And so for Connor to not be on one of those, it feels a bit feels a bit strange. But I also think maybe the UFC are coming at it from UFC 300 is going to do crazy numbers with or without Connor because who isn't going to watch UFC 300 if you're an MMA fan, right? Well, one hundred percent. And you know, at the end of the day, Connor hasn't been in competition for a while. Uh, you know, they've seen loads of training footage and stuff like that, but they, we haven't seen him in competition for, you know, a very, a very long time. So obviously they're, they're going to want to, want to, you know, they're going to want to bring him in and, you know, get him, get him a fight, get him in there, get him competing, you know? So, um, yeah, obviously he, he's a massive name, no, no matter where, where you put him or when you put him, but it's just the same. Like, I think it was two UFC 205 where he, you know, fought against Alvarez and it was a massive show. So yeah, no matter when, you put Connor on a card. It's it's always going to be a, a big fight. 
Um, but of course, there's so many new stars up and coming that, you know, 300, there's a, there's a plentiful list of athletes to put on there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it's exciting to, to, to get to the point, like you said, it, it just reminded me because you said about, they'll probably start matching that, that Saudi card soon. So it's like, uh, we can start getting excited as well about matchups starting to come out for UFC 300. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you know, you'd expect a few huge fights on that card, if not a yeah. lot of huge fights on that card. Yeah. So yeah. it's exciting times. Um, yeah. The only other thing I think to talk about um, for this episode is in between this episode coming out and the next time I speak to you, Christmas will have already happened. So I've, we've already spoken briefly about you going up to Newcastle, but is what are your what are your other plans, I suppose, over this, this well, next week? Merry Christmas to you and everyone, obviously. Um, hopefully everyone has, a, has an amazing time, spend time with family, you know, chilling out, um, drinking, you know, eating Yule logs and drinking uh, mulled wine and mulled cider is the one I must say. Uh, that 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 is my favorite. Uh, I, I went to Winter Wonderland last year. I didn't go this year, but I went last year and mulled cider hits the spot, mate. Especially during that cold. Um, but yeah, just going up to Newcastle, spending time with with uh, with my uh, my stepmom's family, my family. You know, um, going up there. And just, yeah, just kind of chilling out. My sister's going to be there, my dad, uh, you know, Rose. So, yeah, just kind of just just resting, chilling out, um, probably watch some fights and just try and, you know, maybe unwind a little bit, just kind of rest the mind a little bit uh, and then come rejuvenated uh, whenever I come back. I think it will be a much another much needed rest. Obviously, training still on the beach, but more of a mental recharge than than anything. Uh, and I think it, it'll be uh, it'll be very beneficial for me. Um, are you doing the same thing there, mate? Yeah, pretty much. I think uh, I don't know how many days of this next week I'll be working, but probably probably quite a lot of them. But uh, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, pretty much the same thing as me. Just taking taking little breaks where you can and and uh, enjoying the the moments of rest when you can get them. And then, like you said, coming to the new year with. Uh, with motivation. Reinvigoration, exactly. Reinvigoration, motivation, and ready to to tackle big twenty twenty four. Yeah, it works. This this whole usually we would be talking about it as the London date, but the, the March, you know, rough kind of period works out so well because you can take that kind of slightly more relaxed approach in December and then yeah. at the start of the new year you know when everyone's making new year's resolutions and all that stuff you'll that's when you can really start to like okay now we're back back in gear yeah right? re, re, really start um yeah exactly putting the pedal to the metal uh and start really up in the training up in the intensity and then uh yeah just get getting ready to go and fight really really go and uh knock some heads down uh in the new year uh you know, sort of take it, taking over new territory again, you know, um, even though I came off coming off of a loss, uh, it's definitely motivated me and inspired me to improve level up so I can sharpen my blade, add new tools to, to the toolkit uh, to go and decapitate uh, new victims. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, I think maybe the next episode we do, we'll do a bit of a, a bit of a year recap um, yeah, for you. No doubt. Um, talk about you know the three fights you've had this year and some of those experiences and kind of just yeah. round it out before i guess uh starting up again in 2024 i guess a gladiator diary season two of sorts next year <laughs> and 100 uh, we go again for the second season we're, so. we're better, better fit better thing more, more things to talk about uh better things on the horizon uh you know better mentality better physicality everything all together we're we're, we're gonna make it a big one so yeah we're gonna we're gonna cap off the year amazingly next uh next week and uh yeah until then though have an obviously absolutely amazing christmas to you and to everyone and um yeah good times coming yeah man uh have a good have a good few days with uh with yourself and your family and uh nice. and i will catch up with you next week nice one my brother catch you next right. week yeah really See good you one, there, man. Awesome. All right. Cheers.